Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to today's class. It is our third lesson on the ninth topic of Form 4, which is called Photoelectric Effect. As usual, let me commence by giving you the quote of the day, which states that complaining is a zero return investment. You better cut off the losses by quitting it. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So let's start by looking at the origin of this word Einstein's. So the word Einstein's emanates from the name of a physicist and a scientist by the name Albert Einstein's, who was a German theoretical physicist who first developed the theory of relativity. Remember that the theory of relativity can be used to explain scenarios such as time dilation. Einstein's also made great contribution to the discovery of quantum mechanics. You will learn more about quantum mechanics at tertiary level. So let's start by defining uh, what we mean by a photon. So a photon is simply a discrete packet of light energy. The word discrete simply means countable. Therefore, we can count. Uh, uh, we, we are trying to imagine that we can count uh, some packets of light energy. So a photon is simply a discrete packet of light energy. So uh, the Einstein's photoelectric equation uh, can be emanated uh, from uh, uh, the relation whereby we, ha we are having the incident light coming to strike uh, a given uh, metal in order for it to emit some electrons. So when a photon strikes an electron, the energy of the photon, which is given by E, is equal to HF, or simply the energy of the incident radiation, which could be light or maybe ultraviolet radiation, is used in two ways. One of the ways is that some of the energy is used to move or to eject electrons to the metal surface. So such energy is what we are calling the work function, denoted by W0 is equal to HF0, of course, where F0 is the threshold frequency. So you can see that we are having some incident radiation, which could be light, which has an energy equal to HF, of course, where F is the frequency of the incident radiation and E is simply the energy of the incident radiation, which could be light. So we are saying that this energy of the incident radiation is used in two ways. One of the ways is that some of the energy is used to move or to eject electrons to the metal surface. So you can see we have an electron which was within this particular metal, but once this particular um, electron uh, absorbs, uh, once this electron absorbs the photon energy or the energy of the incident radiation, some of that particular energy is used to eject or to move this electron from the inner part of this particular metal to the surface of the metal. So that, that minimum energy required to move an electron from its inner surface uh, of that particular metal to uh, the outer surface of that particular metal, that energy is what we are calling the work function. So some of the energy is used to eject or to move uh, electrons uh, uh, to the metal surface. So this energy that is used to move this electron to the surface of the metal is what we are calling the work function denoted by W0 is equals to HF0, of course, where F0 is the threshold frequency. Then, once these particular electrons uh, get to the surface of the metal, remember there is still some energy that has been, uh, that has remained. Uh, so the rest of the energy will provide the ejected electrons with kinetic energy in order for it to move away from this particular surface. Remember, kinetic energy is the energy in motion. So the remaining energy uh, that this particular electron still has will be used to uh, move this electron from the metal surface. Uh, uh, so you can see the electron is moving away from the metal surface and the energy that is using is what we are calling the maximum kinetic energy. So uh, the Einstein's equation simply uh, demands that uh, the energy of the incident radiation must be equal to the work function plus the maximum kinetic energy uh, that the ejected or the emitted electron is moving with. So the energy of a photon or simply the energy of the incident radiation or the incident light uh, is equal to the energy needed to move or to eject an electron to the metal surface, what we are calling the work function, plus the maximum kinetic energy gained by the ejected electron, what we are calling the maximum kinetic energy. Therefore, uh, the energy of the photon is equal to E, which is simply the energy of the incident radiation, uh, which is equal to W0, which is the work function, the energy needed to remove an electron from the uh, 
inner part of that particular metal to the surface, then plus the maximum kinetic energy uh, with which the emitted electron is moving with. So remember, energy can also be given by HF. Then uh, work function can be given by HF0, where F0 is the threshold frequency. Then maximum kinetic energy can be given by a half Me V squared max, where Me is the mass of the electron, and of course V is the maximum velocity of the emitted electron. So therefore HF is equals to, so remember uh, from E is equals to HF, we can simply, that is from uh, the formula for the work function, from W0 is equals to HF0, but we know that uh, V, that is the uh, V is equals to F lambda, so we can simply say that the speed of light, which is C, is equals to uh, the threshold frequency multiplied by lambda. So if you make a threshold frequency subject of the formula, you'll find that threshold frequency can be given by C over lambda naught, where lambda naught is the threshold wavelength. Therefore, the formula can be HF is equals to HC over lambda naught, then plus a half Me V squared uh, maximum. So where M is the mass of the electron. So M E is the mass of the electron, F is the frequency of the incident radiation, and of course F naught is the threshold frequency, then V max is the maximum uh, velocity of the emitted electron. Next, we look at our first example, which reads that the minimum frequency of light that will cause photoelectric emission from potassium surface is 5.37 times 10 power 14 hertz. When the surface is irradiated using a certain source, photoelectrons are emitted with a speed of 7.9 times 10 power 5 meters per second. Calculate part A, the work function of potassium. So we know that work function, which is noted by W0, is equal to HF0, where F0 is the threshold frequency, and of course H is the Planck's constant. So we are given the Planck's constant as 6.63 times 10 power, negative 34 joules second, then multiplied by the threshold frequency. Remember, threshold frequency is the minimum frequency required to emit an electron from uh, a metal. Therefore, we are told that the minimum frequency of light that will cause photoelectric emission from potassium surface is 5.37 times 10 power 14 hertz. So in short, this is what we are calling the threshold frequency because it is the minimum frequency required to uh, eject an electron. Therefore, uh, the F0, which is the threshold frequency, is 5.37 uh, times uh, 10 power 14 hertz. So let me combine the numbers which do not have uh, the same bases. So this is 6.63 multiplied by 5.37. Then I combine the numbers with similar bases, that is base 10. So this is 10 power negative 34 multiplied by 10 power uh, 14. So this will be 6.63 times 5.37. Then from the loss of indices, whenever you multiply, you have to add the powers. So this will be negative 34, then plus 14. So if you take 6.63 times 5.37, if you compute that on your calculator, you're going to get 35.6031. Then, of course, times 10 power, negative 34 plus 14. So this will be 35.6031 uh, multiplied by, if I add these powers, so negative 34 plus 14, I'm going to get negative 20. Therefore, if you put this on your calculator uh, to standard form, you are going to get uh, 3.56031 times 10 power, negative 19 joules. So this is the... Uh, the work function of potassium. Then part B, we are told to find the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron. So we know that maximum kinetic energy will be equal to a half Me V squared. So this where Me is the mass of the electron and of course V is the uh, velocity, the maximum speed or velocity uh, of the electron. So I simply substitute my values in this particular formula. So this will be a half times the mass of the electron I'm given as 9.1 times 10 power negative 34 kilogram. Then multiplied by uh, the speed or the maximum velocity of the electron is 7.9 times 10 power 5 meters per second. Then of course it is V squared. So I have to square each and every uh, of this value in the bracket. So if you take a half multiplied by 9.1, you'll get 4.55. Then times 10 power negative 31 multiplied by, I want to square each and every value within the bracket. So 7.9 squared will just be 7.9 squared. Then uh, 10 power 5 squared, I'll simply multiply the powers. Uh, so 5 by 2, I'll get 10. So this will be equal to 
4.55 multiplied by 10 power negative 34 then uh, multiplied by the square of 7.9 will be 62.41 then multiplied by 10 power 10 then again i combine the numbers without the bases so 4.55 multiplied by 62.41 multiplied by i combine the numbers uh, which are to base 10 so this is 10 times negative 31 multiplied by 10 power 10 so this will be 4.55 times 62.41 you'll get 283 0.9655 multiplied by whenever we multiply we have to add the powers so this will be negative 34 plus 10 of course we are going to get to 83 times uh, that is 0.9655 then multiplied by uh, negative 31 plus 10 you'll get negative 21 so if you compute this on your calculator to standard form you are going to get 2.839655 times 10 power negative 19 joules so that is the maximum kinetic energy with which the electrons are moving with then part c we are required to find the frequency of the uh, the frequency of the source of irradiation so in short we are being asked to find the frequency of the incident radiation that caused photoelectric emission so i'm going to use uh, the einstein's photoelectric equation which stated that hf is equals to hf naught plus a half me v squared or in short uh, the incident energy of the incident radiation is equals to the work function plus the maximum kinetic energy of the electron so we have already found the work function as uh, 3.56 uh, 3.56031 which can be abbreviated to four significant figures as 3.560 so i'm having 3.560 multiplied by 10 power negative 19 which is the threshold that is the work function then plus the maximum kinetic energy i've found it as 2.839655 then of course times 10 power negative 19 joules so uh i want to make uh, because i'm also given the h the value for h which is the Planck's constant at 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 i'll substitute here so i'll have 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 multiplied by the frequency of the incident radiation which should be equal to if you add 3.56 plus 2.839655 so you'll get 6.399655 then of course everything was times 10 power negative 19. so i want to make frequency subject of the formula so i'll divide both sides by 6.63 times 10 power negative 34. so this will be 6.399655 times 10 power negative 19 divided by 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 so this is going to give me if you take 6.399655 divided by 6.63 uh, uh, you are going to get 0 0.9653 uh, then of course times 10 power if you take negative 19 remember when you divide you subtract the powers uh? so this is same as saying times 10 power negative 19 minus minus 34 of course which will be negative 19 plus 34 so if you multiply that by 0 0.9653 you are going to get 9.653 times 10 power 14 halves so this is the frequency of the incident radiation so you can see you can clearly see that the frequency of the incident radiation is greater than uh, the threshold frequency that is why photoelectric emission took place next we look at our second example which reads that the threshold wavelength of a photoemissive surface is 0 0.45 micrometer calculate part a its threshold frequency now we know that the threshold wavelength is the wavelength that usually corresponds to both the threshold frequency and the work function so for this case i'm given the speed of light as 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second the Planck's constant and also the mass of the electron so i'm also given the threshold uh, wavelength so from the formula v is equals to f lambda so the v is the speed of light then f is the uh, threshold frequency then lambda naught is simply our threshold uh, wavelength but i'm given the threshold wavelength in a uh, micrometer and we know that the si unit for uh, length is the meter therefore i'm going to convert the 0 0.45 micrometer into the si unit which are the meters now we know that a million micrometer is equals to one meter what about 0 0.45 micrometer so that will be 0 0.45 micrometer over a million micrometer multiplied by one meter so this is the same as saying 0 0.45 micrometer over 10 power 6 micrometer 
But we know that from the laws of indices, whenever you divide, you subtract the powers. So if I take 10 power 6 to the numerator, I'm simply going to negate the powers. So this will be 0 0.45 times 10 power negative 6. So negative because I've taken the 10 power 6 to the numerator, therefore I add a negative to the power. So if you compute this on your calculator to standard form, you are going to get 4.5 times 10 power negative 6 meter. That is our threshold wavelength expressed in SI unit and also in standard form. So the question wanted, wanted, wanted us to find the threshold frequency. And from this relation, F is equals to, that is C is equals to F naught lambda naught. If I want to get the threshold frequency, I'll simply divide both sides of this equation by lambda naught. Therefore, threshold frequency will be equal to C over lambda naught. So C is the speed of light, which is 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second, divided by lambda naught is 4.5 times 10 power negative 7 meter. You compute this on your calculator, you are going to get 6.667 uh, times 10 power 14 hertz. I've just expressed this one correct to four significant figures and also in standard form. So this is what we are calling the threshold uh, frequency. Then part B, they want us to find the work function in electron volts. Now we know that work function is equal to HF0, where H is the Planck's constant and F0 is the threshold frequency. So the Planck's constant I'm given as 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 joule second. Then the threshold frequency I've already computed it as 6.667 times 10 power 14 hertz. So you put this on your calculator. If you take 6.63 times 6.667, you are going to get 44.20, of course, to four significant figures. Then if you take 10 power negative 34 times 10 power 14, if the bases are the same, you simply add the powers. Uh. So negative 34 plus 14, you'd get negative 20 uh, in joules. Uh. So you express this in standard form, you are going to get 4.420 times 10 power negative 19 joules. So that is our work uh, function in joules. But the question wants the work function expressed in electron volts. Now we know that, one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 joules. What about 4.420 times 10 power negative 19 joules? So this will be 4.420 times 10 power negative 19 joules over 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 joules multiplied by one electron volt. So this will give you to four significant figures, 2.763 electron volts. Then part C, they want us to find the maximum speed with which a photoelectron is emitted if the frequency of the radiation, that is of the incident radiation, is 7.5 times 10 power 14 hertz. So I'm going to use what we call the uh, Einstein's photoelectric equation, which stated that uh, the energy of the incident radiation should be equal to uh, the sum of the work function and the maximum kinetic energy with which the emitted electron uh, moves with. So the H is the frequent, the, that is the Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 multiplied by f is the frequency of the incident radiation which we are given as 7.5 times 10 power 14 hertz so this should be equal to the work function in joules which is 4.420 times 10 power negative 19 are joules then plus the maximum kinetic energy with which the electrons are moving at so you can see from this formula we'll be able to find at uh, the maximum speed or velocity that the electrons are moving with so if you take uh, 6.63 times 7.5, then of course times 10 power, uh, negative 34 plus 14, you are going to get um, a negative 34, you are going to add to 14. Uh. So if you compute this on your calculator, you are going to get 4.9725 times 10 power, negative 19. Of course, which is equal to the work function, uh, which is uh, 4.420 times 10 power, negative 19, plus a half me v squared max which is the maximum kinetic energy so i'm going to make max the equation for maximum kinetic energy subject of the formula by taking this value to the other side so i'm going to have a half me v squared max is equals to 4.9725 times 10 power negative 19 minus 4.420 times 10 power negative 19 so if you subtract 4.9725 uh, then minus 4.420 then of course you multiply the other times 10 power negative 19, you are going to get in standard form 5.525 times 10 power negative 19. Then of course I substitute the mass of the electron which I'm given as 9.11 times 10 power negative 34, that is 31 kilogram, then multiplied by V max squared. 
So if you take a half of 9.11 um, uh, times 10 power negative 31, you are exactly <coughs> going to get 5.525. Uh, uh, that is, you are going to get, um, so we have a half uh, times 9.11 times 10 power negative 31. So I'm simply trying to make V max squared subject of the formula by dividing both sides of this equation by a half of 9.11 times 10 power negative 31. So V max squared is equal to uh, this value, which is 5.525 times 10 power negative 20 divided by a half of 9.11 point, uh, 9 times 10 power negative 31. So if you compute this on your calculator, you are going to get 1.213 times 10 power 11. Then, of course, to remain with Vmax, I simply find square root on both sides, whereby the square root of uh, Vmax squared will be Vmax, therefore, is equal to the root of 1.213 times 10 power 11. So that square root is going to give you 3.483 times 10 power 5 meters per second. So that is the maximum speed or velocity uh, with which the photoelectron are emitted were moving with. Lastly, I have an exercise that I recommend you should try at your own free time to gauge the understanding of the concepts that you have just learned. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. We've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that complaining is a zero return investment. You better cut off the losses by quitting it. So the quote is warning us against complaining, blaming, and giving excuses whenever we encounter a challenging moment in our life. Remember that as you complain about your life, someone else did not wake up alive today in the morning. As you complain about your house not having a world-class balcony, someone else is homeless in the streets. As you complain about not having the latest fashion of shoes, someone else is wishing that they had legs. And lastly, we should be grateful for everything that we have in our lives, no matter how small they might seem to be. And lastly, recall that complaining and blaming are the best two strategies used by people who don't want to take responsibility for their actions. Therefore, those who complain the most will always achieve the least. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.